Hello and welcome back. Today we're going to be cooking bread rolls, so let's get straight into it. Okay, so start by putting in your dried yeast, your sugar, and a little bit of your tepid or warm water. It's got to be warm and not hot or you'll kill the yeast. Mix them together. I did about 100 milliliters of water, but you could use more or less as long as you have enough to get that yeast dissolved. Then you're going to take all of your flour and salt, sieve them together into a large bowl. Make a well in the middle of your flour, then you can add all of your yeast mixture, the rest of your tepid or warm water, and all of your oil, all in one go. As always, I'll add the recipe and all the equipment I'm using to the description below if you want to have a look at that or buy any of the equipment for yourself. Now we're just going to roughly mix all that together to form what's called a shaggy dough. That's just where it is roughly incorporated but it is not yet smooth. And you can dump all that out on the table, scrape your bowl out and we'll begin the kneading process. So this is just where you're working the dough, stretching it. This is going to go on for about 10 minutes. I'll slow the video down a bit so I can show you the technique I use to knead the dough. It's a good technique, gets it done quickly. Quite often I don't need to do it for even 10 minutes. So to test if the dough has been kneaded enough, we're going to do something called the window pane test. And this is just where you slowly stretch out your dough to form a thin membrane. And if you can stretch it and it's this thin where you can see light through it, it means that you've developed a good gluten network and you've got plenty of strength in your dough and you can move on to the next step. If not, just continue kneading for another three or four minutes and try again. So once you've got that good gluten development, you're going to put it in a bowl, cover it with a cling film and leave it in a warm place. Now, a lot of recipes will say for an hour, it's until doubled in size. It took mine about an hour and a half on this occasion, but it can be more, can be less. So the next step is doing something that people refer to as knocking back, uh, which really just means to get the air out of it. So you'll just give it a 30 second knead and you'll feel a lot of air bubbles in there. Just give them a good squeeze out. You don't want any large air pockets in there. And then we're gonna weigh this out into our portions, into our individual bread rolls. So we're gonna go with 60 gram bread rolls here today, but if you like them larger, just weigh them 80. If you want them a bit smaller, obviously go to 40. So now we've got all our dough weighed out, we need to start shaping. So we're going to start by turning all of these pieces into smooth balls and to do that you're going to put your palm flat on top, put medium pressure on until you're squashing against the side, roll in a circular motion and as that forms a ball you're going to turn your hand into more of a claw, releasing some pressure and letting it roll all the way around your hand. This just is going to come with practice. If your balls come out looking like this it probably means you haven't put enough pressure on or you aren't rolling around fast enough. Okay, now you've got them all shaped into balls, you're going to want to cover them with a damp tea towel. That must be damp, not dripping wet, it will wreck all of your bread, so just make sure it's damp, bring it out as much as you can. Okay, on to the shaping. So the first shape is just a ball. Nothing here, we're just going to give it a quick shape again, just in case it's proved a little since it's been sat there. Back into a ball, onto the tray. Shape one done. Okay, shape number two, we're just going to make sure it's nice and round again and then we're going to roll it just into this oblong and leave it just like that. Shape number two, done. So once you've got a couple on your baking tray, you're going to want to move your damp tea towel over to make sure they don't dry out. So if you notice, I always use them from the left 
of my pile of balls and put them on the left of my baking tray. This means I can use one tea towel to make sure they're all covered still. Okay, on to shape number three. So I'm gonna give it that first pre-shape into the ball again and then roll it out into what I'm gonna to refer to as a rope. Now, all of the rest of the shaping techniques gonna use this rope to start. If you need a little bit of excess flour, put a little bit on, too much will stop you from being able to actually roll this out. And you're just gonna roll it out into an even thickness rope. Once you've got your rope rolled out, you're gonna tie this one into a knot. If you find it sticking, just dust it with a little extra flour. Shape number four, start with your rope and then roll each end up in the same way until they meet in the middle, making sure that they're both the same size. Shape number five, roll one end down and the other end up, very similar to shape number four. Shape number six, you're gonna just find the halfway mark, fold it in half, and then fold over to create this twisted pattern. So shape number seven is gonna use two balls. You can do this with one, but you'll find it very difficult to roll them all out into three individual ropes. So all we're gonna do is put them all together and then plait them. So shape number eight starts exactly the same as shape number six. You're gonna just do that twisted pattern. However, this time, once you've got that pattern, you're just gonna roll it up into a circle and then pinch the ends together. So here's all the shape bread on one tray. Now this has had its 30 minute second rise and we're just gonna egg wash it. After I cut the video, I also decided I was gonna to top it with a few bits. So I put some nigella seeds on some, some sesame seeds on some, and just some dried mixed herbs on others. But you can use whatever you like. Cheese is a good option too. And here they are all cooked. Okay, if you've learned anything today, please subscribe, like, and comment, and I'll see you next week when we'll be cooking something called Navran of Lamb.